I'm going to just try to show you how to remember uh, the difference between the identity property, the commutative property, the associative property, and the distributive property. And I'm going to use a method called the method of loci. The method of loci is where if you have to remember a lot of things, you picture it in a certain location, location, like, for instance, a playground. If you have to remember, say, I don't know, four different things, and it's really hard for you to keep them straight, if you place them, if you draw them out and place them in a certain spot on that playground, like maybe one thing you have to remember, you put it by the swing sets, and you draw it in a crazy place, like hanging from the top of the swing set or something. The other thing you draw in the jungle gym, like laying on the ground in the jungle gym, and the third thing you put by the slide, maybe sliding down the slide. If you have to rememberize these for a test or whatever, then you can, when you're taking the test, you picture that playground, and, hope, and you say, who is by the swing set? Let's see who is by the swing set. And it, it, oh yeah, it was hanging from, the, hanging from the swing set. And it really does work. So I'm gonna use that system to, or that method to uh, mem remember these. And these properties are easy. It's not, they're not difficult, it's remember, it, what's difficult is trying to remember the names and keeping which name goes with which property. That's what's difficult, and that's what I'm going to show you. Okay, so we're going to start actually with the commutative property. And we're going to put, and remember, we're going to put them in a location, but we're not going to use the playground, we're going to use your driveway. We're going to put the commutative property in your driveway. So I'm going to draw a picture of your driveway. And that's the commutative property in your driveway. Now the commutative property, I'm going to write it right underneath that. That's A plus B equal B plus A. And like I said, that's not hard. I mean, all that means is uh, like 2 plus 3 is the same thing as, uh, crap, is the same thing as 3 plus 2. You get 5 both ways. Okay, that's not hard. What's hard is remembering what name goes with which thing. All right. <clears throat> now, it also helps if, we, if you know what the word commutative means. So I'm going to take. A, I'm going to tell you just a real short story to help you remember what commutative means. When I went to school at a high university, one quarter I lived there, two quarters I lived there actually, but then one quarter I didn't live there. I commuted. I drove back and forth. I would drive an hour and 20 minutes there, go to class, and an hour and 20 minutes back home. Back and forth, back and forth every day. That's what commute means. I was a commuter. And it's a very common term on college campuses because, uh, you know, kids in my class would say, do, do you commute? And I'd go, yeah, I commute. It's easier to say, do, do you commute, than it is to say, do you live here or do you drive back and forth every day? You just say, do you commute? Yes, I'm a commuter. Commute means to drive back and forth, or go back and forth, or ride your bicycle back and forth, or walk back and forth, but go back and forth. Now, does it make sense that since it's talking about traveling, commuting, it's in your driveway? Okay, so that's the commutative property in your driveway, and now we are going to enter your house. Into the living room. And in the living room, we're going to find the identity property. So I'm going to draw a big eyeball so you can identify the person that walks in the house. Identify the person that walks in the house. And we're putting that identity property in your living room because if somebody walks in your house, you're going to look and try to identify them. Let's say somebody walks in your house that's not normally in your house. Like if your mom walks in your house, you know it's your mom because, oh, I see your hair, you know. But if it's somebody that's not normally in your house, your first inclination, you know it is, is to say, be nosy and say, who is it? And you look them in the eye to identify them. That's why we're putting the identity property in the living room when you walk in the house. Now, we're going to write the word identity property right here. Identity. And then this is your living room. And we're going to write the identity property right here. A plus equal A. I left that blank because you don't, if somebody doesn't even know what it is, it's so easy they can get it. A plus what would, would keep its same identity? What could you add to A 
that would make the A keep its same identity. In other words, wouldn't change it. It'd still be an A. What could I add to A that would still make it an A? Uh, C rim. So I'll add nothing. If you add nothing to it, then it's still an A. It keeps its same identity. That's called the identity property of addition. And that zero is called the identity element. That's the element or the thing that you can add that doesn't change it. So that's like easy, super easy. And again, it's the words that's what's difficult. Then the other identity property is a dot. Try this one. What goes in this hoe? What can you multiply A by? That dot means multiply. What can you multiply A by that would make it keep its same identity, that wouldn't change it at all? Could you times by 2? No, that would change it. Could you times it by 3? No, that would change it. You can multiply it by 1. 1 times anything is that same thing. 1 times 8 is 8. Two, 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times A is A. Keeps its same identity. So that's the identity property in your living room. Now we're going to move to the associative property, and we're going to put that in the playroom. Playroom for the kids. And we're going to indicate that it's a playroom by drawing a beach ball in there. Beach ball. See those little thing, you know, round thingies coming off the beach ball? That, that's in your associative property, too. Because it's A plus B plus C equal A plus B plus C. But it's got these, and I'm going to use color because a beach ball has a lot of color. It's got this here. I hope you can see the color on the video. I don't know. And then here, I'll use Balu too. Oh, that make it really colorful. Well, if it shows up on the video. All right, so why did I use these grouping symbols? Because think of these as little people in the playroom, little kids. A and B, uh, Amanda and where's a B? Brody. Amanda and Brody are hanging out and playing uh, here first, and over here, Brody decides to hang out with Cameron. Okay, so these are Brody and Cameron are hanging out here, and uh, did I do that right? Yeah, and over here, I forgot who I said. Amanda, <laughs> Amanda and Brody are hanging out here. Now, in math terms, that means. If you have a 1, say A is 1 plus 2 plus 3, okay? Equal 1 plus 2 plus 3. It doesn't matter if you add the 1 and 2 together first, or if you add the 2 and 3 together first, you're going to get the same answer up. Because 1 plus 2 is 3, and 3 plus 3 is 6. And over here, 2 plus 3 is 5, and 5 plus 1 is still 6. So that's not difficult. Like I said, it's just the, remembering the name. So this was the associative property. And the, to, the way to connect that word associative, who's associating together first? A and B are hanging out, associating. Who's associating, uh, associating together next? B and C. That's the associative property in the playroom. And I'm going to get rid of this so it's, I like to kiss. <laughs> That's my favorite saying. Keep it simple, stupid. All right, so that's in your playground. Now we're going to move into the kitchen. Yum. So we're going to go into the kitchen, and in the kitchen we have the distributive property. And that is you find B and C sitting at an oval table. B and C are sitting at an oval table. Here's B and C. And here comes Mummy, and she's serving A for dinner. So A is being served for dinner. Now, you better distribute, I'm not going to put that up there, I'm going to put it over here. You better distribute A to everybody. Give it, I'll put, I'll use red. Give it A to the B and give some yummy A to the C. What could A stand for for food? I can't think of a food that starts with an A. Anyway. <laughs> Um, so you give what A to B, yummy A to B, and you give yummy A to C. You distribute one to every, distribute means pass out. So you give one to everybody, give some to him, and give some to him. So it's A to him and A to him. 
And that's called the distributive property. And we're going to put that distributive property, like if you had a pan on the stove cooking, and you wanted to show in your picture, if I drew a picture of it, how could I show that it was hot and yummy soup? I would draw these little, mmm, yummy. So I'm going to draw this, mmm, yummy from the kitchen. That's a distributive property in the kitchen. So, <clears throat> so you, if you look at this picture, you've got a handle here and a handle there and three rooms in the middle of The commutative is when they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then you've got three, remember you've got three rooms. Identity in the living room. Associative, who do you associate in the playroom? Who do you associate in the playroom with? And then you go into the kitchen and you better give an A to everybody. Now, we didn't talk about what that means in terms of math. So in terms of math, that means, say you have two plus three. In parentheses, sitting at the oval table, which is fine. And you come along and you want to times that by, let's say, four. Okay, so that would be five. And four times five is twenty. Now, what if we did it differently and we put four times two first? See, that to that, that to that. Four times two first, and then did four times three. Well, four times two is eight plus twelve. You still get twenty. So, so it, it's saying it doesn't matter which one you did first. You can add these together first and then times by four. Or you can times that, times that, and that, times that, and then plus them together up. All right, so there's your picture. If you draw that, if you draw that on a piece of paper once a day for a week, because of the method of loci, it would stick in your brain because you would think identity property. That's the one where you identify them when they walk in the door. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it, it gives you, uh, your brain, something to find a location, and it helps you to remember them. The method of LESI.